What's going on guys? In this one we're going to be creating one of my childhood favourite desserts which is a chocolate pudding cake. In this recipe the thing that makes it so special is that the sauce is created inside the batter so there's no need to create a separate one for it. So when you cut it open there's just this gooey chocolate sauce completely throughout. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Alright guys, starting this off, let's add 150 grams or 5.2 ounces of plain all-purpose flour to a mixing bowl along with 165 grams or 5.8 ounces of castor or fine sugar, 20 grams or 0.7 ounces of dark cocoa powder, 8 grams or 0.3 ounces of baking powder which is not baking soda so please don't use that, and 2.5 grams or 0.1 ounces of sea salt flakes. Give this a whisk to combine and for a quick rundown the flour provides structure, the sugar obviously for sweetness but also provides fermentable solids, the cocoa powder allows for that chocolate flavour and colour, the baking powder contains both the sodium bicarbonate and acid needed for the cake to rise and finally the sea salt flakes will enhance the flavour which will leave us salivating. Once done add in the wet ingredients which consists of 170 grams or 6 ounces of full fat milk. 70 grams or 2.4 ounces of melted unsalted butter, also putting aside an extra little bit to be used for greasing. 5 grams or 0.2 ounces of vanilla extract or one vanilla pod with the seeds extracted. And finally, for an optional extra, add in 150 grams or 5.2 ounces of white chocolate chips, but that is completely up to you. Let's now get our whisk back in there to combine the ingredients into a smooth cake batter and for this the full fat milk is going to improve the texture to help achieve a crisp crust or surface. The melted butter is going to tighten the structure of the cake resulting in fewer air bubbles which will allow for our sauce to make its way into certain spots of our cake which creates amazing texture. The vanilla extract provides extra flavour and isn't a required ingredient if you choose not to use it. And finally the white chocolate chips just add an even more silky smooth chocolate flavour and texture throughout so if you don't want to use them you don't have to. With the small amount of melted unsalted butter that we kept aside before, use a pastry brush to grease up a 26cm by 18cm deep baking dish and if you have a smaller or bigger baking dish just keep in mind that the cooking times will vary, for example with a small dish the batter will be more deeper resulting in longer cooking times and as for a bigger dish the batter will be more stretched out resulting in a shorter cooking time but don't worry if so I'll leave all of the accurate cooking times for that in the description below. Once that's greased up we can then pour in our delicious cake batter using a spatula to scrape it all in there to avoid any wastage. Then using a spatula again, level it out as best as you can, keeping the edges of the dish clean, that way we won't have any burnt bits. Now in another bowl to make the self sauce add in 105 grams or 3.7 ounces of castor or fine sugar, 85 grams or 3 ounces of brown sugar and 20 grams or 0.7 ounces of dark cocoa powder. Just like before give this a whisk to combine and the rundown for this part is that the white and brown sugars will provide sweetness with the brown sugar giving us a deeper molasses flavour, they'll also give the surface of our cake the most incredible crispness and for the cocoa powder that again will provide the colour and chocolate flavour that we all know and love. This can now be tipped onto the top of our cake batter, distributing it evenly if you can but it doesn't matter too much because we then want to evenly spread it out with the back of a spoon completely coating only the surface. Also don't mix it in or push it down as this is what will create our sauce and allow it to flow throughout our cake. For the last ingredient we're going to need boiling water and to achieve this I'm using the multi temperature Bowdoin Bistro kettle which has 5 different temperature settings to which I'm going to measure out 310 millilitres or 310 grams of boiling water. Using the Bowdoin Bistro barista scale, pouring the water into Bowdoin's 350 millilitre spare beaker glass. If you're interested in any of these products I've fortunately partnered with Bodum to show off their products which are genuinely amazing with all of the links in the description below and if you wish to purchase something it greatly helps me out as a creator to continue making these videos and getting these opportunities and I'd also like to throw out that I'm not a sellout and 100% back Bodum's products they are truly incredible. Now going back into it, carefully and gently pour the boiling water over the entire cake, evenly distributing it as best as possible and for this step please do not stir or mix it through as the water will work with the mix we made in the previous step to create a sauce which will flow throughout our cake. This can now be taken over to a preheated oven set to 180 degrees celsius or 350 degrees fahrenheit, place it onto the middle shelf and bake for 40 minutes or until the centre is only just cooked. 40 minutes later this can now be carefully removed being careful of any escaping steam on your arms or face then place it onto a heat resistant surface or wire rack allowing it to cool for 10 minutes. 
Once cool, let's then scoop our portions out or wait for it to firm up in the fridge to make it a lot more tidy and neat. But for a dessert like this, I think presentation can kind of be shoved under the rug a little bit. As being a self-sourcing cake, it tends to get a little messy unless it's something like a chocolate lava cake, which is a lot more compact. To serve this up, place the delicious chocolatey pudding into a bowl or on a plate, whatever you're into, keeping in mind that this is really hot, so maybe don't use your hands kind of like what I'm doing here. You really can serve this up with all of your favorite toppings, but I do think a couple of scoops of ice cream are in order for this awesome hot and cold combination, and of course, top it with that silky smooth chocolate sauce. I'm personally adding over a few sliced strawberries for a nice freshness, but like I said, add whatever you like, and to add that finishing touch, dust over some icing sugar which really makes that amazing pudding stand out. This then leaves us with this easy, quick, and incredibly tasty self-sourcing chocolate pudding cake, which leaves us with the part to make this all worthwhile, and that is we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves four to six people and that's not 46 people and it can easily be doubled, tripled and so on or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, you can place it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to one week or in the freezer in an airtight container for up to six months and to reheat it, place it back in the oven on 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and just heat it up till it's nice and hot or you can place it in the microwave, just do whatever's easiest for you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, comment, share, do all of that stuff, it really does help my channel out and consider to subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.